You signed on to this. You told me you wanted happily ever after. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at the shocking true story of bad vegan, fame, fraud, fugitives. I got the popcorn out. Like, let's do this. Who cares about their pizza? What happened to the money? What if Sarma's running a scam on him? For this video, we're exploring the scandalous real-life events that inspired Netflix's miniseries documentary. Which part of the story surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. In 2004, Sarma Melangalis became the queen of vegan cuisine thanks to her trailblazing contributions to the vegan and raw food culinary industry. I have a restaurant, Pure Food and Wine, in New York that opened in the summer of 2004 and uh, then came up with this book, Raw Food Real World. In just over a decade, she would lose it all. So how did that happen? Backed by restaurateur Jeffrey Chottero, Melon Gallus opened Pure Food and Wine Restaurant with her then-boyfriend Matthew Kenny back in 2004. Raw veganism was still a relatively new concept in those days, so their idea was considered groundbreaking. It's the only restaurant of all the vegan and raw food restaurants that is taking the food to another level and making it more upscale. It wasn't long before famous faces like Anne Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, Owen Wilson, and Giselle Bündchen were among the exclusive restaurant's customers. Owen Wilson used to just post up in the back and like walk through the kitchen. And I'm like, what is this place? <laughs> According to the New York Times, it's also where Alec Baldwin later met his wife, Ilaria Thomas, in 2011. It's ironic that today I saw the trailer for Bad Vegan about Sarma, who uh, was the owner of Pure Food and Wine. And I met my wife at Pure Food and Wine uh, on February 18th, 2011. In fact, it seems that Anthony Strangis, an important part of the story, was first led to Melangalis through Twitter interactions with the couple. And the actor was among those who eventually became suspicious of Strangis's intentions. In 2005, Melon Gallus and Kenny broke up, and he left the business soon after. Still, the restaurant continued to capture the attention of people, celebrities, and publications everywhere. Everything was going well for pure food and wine, at least on the surface. It was the top raw vegan restaurant in the world. It was ahead of its time, and it was a high-end, fine-dining vegan experience that was a hot spot. That changed in 2011, when Melon Gallus met a new man, Strangis, on Twitter. Melon Gallus became romantically entwined with Anthony Strangis following their online introduction. Strangis, who would also go by Shane Fox, was a criminal with past arrests. He was a gambler, too. His previous wife and mother of his child, Stacey Avery, highlighted his dishonest behavior. She claimed that he impregnated her, promised her a vast inheritance, pawned off her belongings, and then bailed on her and their child. But, though their relationship ran into some bumps, Melon Gallus and Strangis reportedly tied the knot in 2012. However, the exact details surrounding their union are cloudy at best. According to Vanity Fair, Strangis' own stepmom couldn't understand how Melon Gallus got tangled up with him, saying, quote, A woman like her? What did she see in Anthony? There were tons of conspiracy theories about why she married him. Was there some sort of blackmail involved? It was just all very mysterious. Well, apparently he promised her that he could make her, and more importantly, her dog Leon, immortal. No, you did not mishear us. I'm gonna need a minute. <laughs> but that's not all. He also promised her financial security and to pay off her debts. As you've probably gathered, these were all empty claims. As if that wasn't enough on its own, Strangis allegedly told her about some elusive secret brother who could track her every move. How did an impressive businesswoman succumb to such preposterous offers? Well, sources close to Malangalis believe she was coerced by her husband into making poor decisions. Anthony told Sarma she had to perform a series of tests. He promises her that he is going to make Sarma and her dog immortal. He even led her to think that some of her own family members were red shirts, meaning bad people. Strangis reportedly went so far as to con Melangalis's mother, claiming that her daughter was sick and desperately needed money. Kind of had this very vague awareness about it, but didn't really pay attention, didn't sort of stop to think about it, really. He apparently presented everything as, quote, cosmic endurance tests, which Melangalis had to pass to be rewarded. He 
made her believe that she could do anything, as long as she followed his every command. If I tell you to take all your money out of the bank and light it on fire, do it. He even got her to hand over her passwords, claiming that his tech expert noticed she'd been hacked. She was also withdrawing money from her business accounts, depositing it into her personal one, and using it to fund Strongest's lavish lifestyle. She supposedly took out around 1.6 million, about 1.2 million of which he gambled away. Mangalas and Strangis allegedly spent $2 million at Foxwoods Casino, Mohegan Sun, and luxury travel around the world. And according to prosecutors, she also owes $400,000 in taxes. During this time, Melangalis' staff were waiting for their paychecks. Police say the husband and wife cheated 84 workers out of $40,000. Each lost roughly $3,500 in pay starting in 20. Strangis seemingly joined the business, which had expanded to include the One Lucky Duck juice bar and a production center by this point, around 2013. And the team barely saw their formerly attentive workaholic boss anymore. It was such a great environment to work in. If none of this had ever happened, we'd probably still be working there. Melon Gallus would paint an array of excuses about the missing paychecks. We were told lies about uh, switching banks and, and uh, uh, you know, routing uh, errors. But in January 2015, when they bounced, 98 angry and unpaid employees walked out, and the restaurant had to close. About a month later, she tried to garner funds from patrons in an attempt to reopen. She even told them that she had needed to withdraw that previously missing cash for her mom, which we know was false. Her pleas worked, though. She managed to source a whopping $844,000, which she used, at least in part, to compensate ex-staff and take care of other expenses. But police say instead she transferred those funds into her personal bank account. She then assured investors she was planning to sell her venture to someone named Michael Caledonia. But guess who that really was? The man's true identity was apparently revealed as one Anthony Strangis. That's not all, though. Soon enough, she fell back into old patterns of misusing company funds for personal gain and failing to pay her team. That's rent, all my bills paid, uh, food. Initially, the checks started to bounce and we were suspicious. She apparently also tried to intimidate the staff by claiming she would fire anyone who didn't continue doing their job despite the missing salaries. In July 2015, the employees walked out for good. As if that wasn't bad enough, the indictment is said to state that over $400,000 in sales tax for the business went unpaid. By the summer of 2015, the couple seemingly disappeared from New York, spending months on the run. According to the DA's office, they went to Las Vegas, Louisiana, and Tennessee. They were wanted for such crimes as grand larceny, criminal tax fraud, scheme to defraud, and violation of labor law, among other things. Ultimately, Strangis's appetite would lead law enforcement right to them. They tell us last week they traced one of their credit cards to a Domino's in Tennessee, for the couple that supposedly preached a healthy vegan lifestyle to customers, including celebrities, ordered a pizza for delivery. With that non-vegan order, which also included chicken wings, what was left of their reputation crumbled and they were finally arrested in May of 2016. Melon Gallus was held at the Sevierville Jail ahead of being transferred to Rikers before making bail. She faced up to 15 years behind bars. In 2017, she pled guilty and was sentenced to four months in jail with five years of probation. These days, she's pretty active on social media and has notably posted to promote Netflix's upcoming Bad Vegan documentary. Her Instagram bio also states that she's, quote, mourning pure food and wine and one lucky duck. And in case you were wondering, her dog Leon has his own page too. Still, some believe that Melangalis was a willing participant in this scam rather than a victim of intimidation and coercion. Like Melangalis, Strangis faced up to 15 years in prison and was held on Rikers Island, though he remained there. He pled guilty and ended up spending about a year in prison, with an additional five-year probation period. His attorneys seem to deny many of the stories that have since come out against him. They allegedly told the judge that Melon Gallus was the real culprit. Not much seems to be known about Strangis' current whereabouts, but it has been said that the couple has since gotten divorced. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Thus, the queen of vegan cuisine fell from grace and earned herself a new, less flattering nickname. What if Sarma is running a scam on him? If that was the con. Makes her look like the vegan Bernie Madoff. Of course, many of the story's finer details are still unclear, and we all have a lot of questions. Hopefully, Netflix's documentary will provide us with the answers we need. Do you know about the meat suit? What is the meat suit? Oh, no. What's the meat suit? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.